I think we have to highlight the fact that uh, the aviation has been a European success story. Thanks to European efforts and actions, we have uh, today better accessibility to flights for all through cheaper tickets, more connections, safer and more secure flights, improved uh, industrial cooperation, leading to the European and worldwide champions in manufacturing, and I can go on and on in listing all the positive developments we have seen over the last uh, few years. We also have to um, highlight the fact that the aviation sector is the key to the EU economy. Its direct contribution to the EU GDP amounts to 110 billion euros, employing around 2 million people. And if we take indirect contribution, we would arrive at the figure much higher, more than 5 million jobs. Today, the European Union has launched its aviation strategy, aiming to make the, the industry more competitive. What do you think of the strategy? We believe that the aviation strategy is a very good um, commitment from the Commission. We welcome it. We welcome the Commission's ambition uh, to enhance and stimulate the competitiveness of the European airline industry. Uh, so that's a very good development. We've been calling for such a strategy for quite a long time and it's encouraging to see the Commission has picked up the challenge and has developed this. Okay. What are the main challenges within the EU for airlines? There are a couple of challenges for European airlines at the moment. If you look at the internal European market, we liberalized the market about 20 years ago. That's a, a big achievement. So caused a lot of extra uh, choice for passengers, choice in the market, differentiation in the market. So that's a real achievement. We're very happy with that. The biggest impediment and the biggest problem for European airlines at the moment is the cost and regulatory burden imposed on them, both at European but also at member states level. And that needs to be addressed, in our view, in this strategy. And we will call on the Commission to be a bit more forceful um, in dealing with those challenges in the future. The Commission have placed a lot of emphasis on the external aspect of their aviation strategy. Would you like to say something about how the European airlines feel about that element? Are we on a level playing field with other competitors outside Europe? Yeah, I think it actually complements the internal part I just mentioned. When we look at the external part, I think the key thing for the industry is that we welcome the Commission's uh, initiative to negotiate comprehensively with other regions in the world, like Turkey, China, the ASEAN countries in the Far East, um, etc. But we would like to call on the Commission to be very clear about the criteria under which it's going to ne uh, negotiate, what the key achievements are at the end, and again, what time they think they might need to do these uh, negotiations. Finally, this is the week of COP21, European the, the UN negotiations on the future of the climate. What role will aviation play in reaching the goals of staying within two degrees by 2050? I think what the aviation industry has done uh, itself, it's uh, created targets uh, which it wants to achieve both between now and 2020. So we're looking at a decrease of between one and a half and two percent on an annual basis uh, between now and 2020. And then carbon neutral growth from 2020 onwards, completely decoupling the growth in the market with the emissions of the sector. That is a message that we have taken to Paris, to COP21, and we certainly hope that the countries at COP21 will acknowledge and achieve, uh, the achievements and the ambition of the industry. More important for us is the ICAO General Assembly to be held in the fall of 2016, because ICAO is the United Nations body which will deal with aviation and carbon, and we're certainly looking forward to play our role in that and stimulate ICAO to come up with a global deal of CO2 and aviation. The strategy strikes the right balance between actions to further liberalize and open up new market opportunities in Europe and abroad on one hand and measures to ensure that aviation growth is sustainable from the social and environmental perspective on the other hand. And addressing sustainable growth, the proposal fits very well with the COP21 agenda.